Hello and welcome to the second part of our online Blue Arc training. And basically today what we're going to do is basically create a file system from a storage pool and assign it to a virtual server that we created in part one of our training. So here we are back at the Blue Arc Systems Management Unit. And very, very simply, I'm just going to check that the EVS is actually being created online. So I'm going back to my EVS management, and here my enterprise virtual server is telling me it's online and available for use. I'm then going to go back to the home page and simply go to file systems. And what I'm going to do today is basically create a file system and add that to the EVS1, the virtual server that we created in part one. So very straightforward. I go to the Create button down here on our Systems Management Unit. And what it actually brings up is a choice. We have the ability to do an area called a read cache, but today, as part of this demonstration, we're going to do a read writable file system, hence clicking the File System option on the left hand side here. From that, it brings up a collection that are available to the Titan in terms of storage pools, and a storage pool is a collection of disks that's been virtualized. And what we actually have here is basically a capacity of all of those different storage pools listed and what the free capacity is, as some of these are in use. And what we're going to do today is basically just pick off the first one, and as an example, but you could choose different types of storage for different types of um, file systems that you require. But today we're going to just pick off a simple SATA uh, option that uh, actually has 5 terabytes available here. It has 5 terabytes capacity and has about 3.46 terabytes available for use. I'm then going to hit the next button and I'm going to select just one simple terabyte out of that pool storage pool and basically we have the ability to auto expand seamlessly and we also support thin provisioning but I'm actually going to switch that off today to keep it very very simple. I'm then going to give my file system a label, a name, so I'm going to call this EVS1 file system and I'm going to assign it to the EVS we created in part one of the early video clip. We support worm type functionality and again that will be covered off in later video clips. The key differentiator here compared to our competition is really the ability to select block sizes. So we have the ability to select a 4K block size and as it says there it's far more space efficient in terms of smaller files. And typically for larger files if we're doing things like iSCSI LUNs or large video editing or large video storage or basically deep D archive that have large sequential files we would use this 32K block. So by selecting that and the OK button, this will actually create us very, very simply from that set of SATA disks that have been virtualized into storage pool 1, a file system, and assign it to my virtual server that I created earlier. So you can see it's actually already come up. It's told me the block size. It's told me our file system type, WFS1. So if I actually go back to home, and I check my virtual server out over here on the right hand side and I actually check my details of that you can see it has now been assigned a file system from the storage pool we created earlier on. We can click on that and that will actually give us a much more detailed view of the file system and the key thing here really is looking at the total space, well, one terabyte capacity. We've actually used only 3.06 gig, and that is a huge differentiator compared to most of our competitors. Our file system is extremely lean and has the ability to actually expand as you require it, as we've done here. And the key thing about this as well is we can automatically expand that on the fly. So if one terabyte isn't enough, we would really needed two. I could hit the expand button, button and manually expand this to two terabytes very simply. Hit OK and that will automatically expand the file system as you can see there now straight up to two terabytes. So that's all we're going to cover today on file systems and the next part will be looking at how we actually put an NFS 
mount or a SIF share onto that file system. Thank you.